Imagine being detained in a hospital for a period of a year and seven months because you cannot afford to settle the hospital bill. For Florence Kageka, that has been her reality as she remains a patient at the Eagle Nursing Home in Kangemi since March 2020. Unable to leave despite being discharged in July of the same year with a bill that is now in excess of 1.4 million shillings. Unfortunately, her story is only one of many cases of patients being detained by hospitals on account of unpaid bills. Ben Kirui now reports on an ugly contest of rights between hospitals and poor patients. Here's our special report. Her bloodshot eyes are proof of the endless tears she has shed in frustration after getting confined at the Eagles nursing home in Kangemi for close to two years. It has been 18 months and counting. Florence Kageka, a house manager, has not been able to move outside this hospital since the pre-COVID-19 pandemic era. Terms like curfew and public social distancing are foreign to her. While the 27-year-old languishes in hospital, her two children at home are growing up in the absence of their mother. Her husband Godwin Mahindo now wears both hats. He is the father and mother figure in the lives of their 10-year-old son and 8-year-old daughter. We visited the family home early one weekday to find Godwin preparing his children for school. Duties now entrenched following the two-year absence of his wife. Asubuhi kama mimi mfana bi mwenye na amuka saa 11 na moja na nusu. Ndio watairishie chai kama kuna kamukate ni watengenezee nini lunch box zao. Waende wasukue meno kwa kuwavalisha nini uniform wameanza ku notice yes wameanza kuchukua uniform wanavaa lakini paka huko hapo kama mzazi uangalia amevaa vest amevaa sweta hizo haya ni mchukue ni mpeleke paka kwa ya shule. Hiyo ni kitu ya daily basis. Jioni wanarudi wenyewe at least wanavukishwa na mwalimu barabara wanatembelea one side ni one side wanafika hapa lakini asubuhi ndio shida lazima warukishe njia ili ukikuja huku unapata Godwin amekaa hata anajihurumia anashangaa ni aje hata haja toa wife yake kule ndani alafu pia imekuwa ni ngumu kwa sababu kuna zile vitu kama chali saizi anafanya unapata asubuhi godi ameamka asubuhi anakuambia edi nimetoka kunua maziwa unaona ama jioni watoiwa kikamu aoshe watoi feel poor ju niko hapa at least nimepona au kwa nyumbani hata tukiongea nao i think my boy ananiambianga oh mimi ni kama nimekatalia osi atwe so umekata kukuja umekatalia umekatalia osi ili ajui ni kwa nini niko osi ni juu ya pesa au ni nini anajua tu mimi nimekatalia nimekatalia osi in March last year, Florence and her two children were rushed to Eagle's nursing home for treatment after they were involved in a road accident in Kangemi. They were on their way home from a relative's funeral in Uderu when the motorbike they were being transported on was involved in an accident. They were lucky to have survived the accident that claimed the life of the Boda Boda rider. Her children were treated and discharged, but a leg injury forced a protracted stay in hospital for Florence. She underwent an operation to insert a metal plate into her right limb. The family claims that they made a request to the hospital to allow them to transfer Florence to the Kenyatta National Hospital as her hospital bill was fast accumulating. Requests, they say, the hospital turned down because of an unpaid bill of 56,000 shillings. <laughs> tukaanza kushughulika dikajua hiyo hospitali ni private sita yazana naye kwa sababu siko na pesa mimi ni mtu wa jua gari tu siko na pesa nikamwambia nipatie ugonjwa wangu nipeleke Kinyata wakaniambia ni issue ndogo si issue ya itakuwa na pesa mingi ni kitu ya kufanya watibiwe leo kesho watoke after like a week they came back the relatives came back 
I think from the side of the mother and negotiated with me and requested me to continue with the operation as they go and solicit the money as because the operation entailed some fixation. That's how we usually put some rods just to make sure that we stabilize the, the surgery, the, the, the fracture. So the relatives came and negotiated with us. They are going to pay and we leave alone those things that happened and we forge on to help the client. Sasa kama ume mzuia mwaka moja na zaidi. Je hata ukiendelea kumzuia miaka mitano ingine ama kumi ingine. Ataweza kulipa? We don't intend to take any anybody around. Rather, we are not a cell or rather a prison to do that. The hospital instead blames Florence's husband for neglecting his wife and being uncooperative. We don't intend to keep her long here. I want to, to keep to put that in record and I want you Kirui to take this home. This is the person that we've assisted along the way. Keep in mind that it's an expense on our side, a serious expense. If there is a way that at least we can have an agreement whereby the bill can be paid and the balance is agreed upon on how it can be paid, we are ready to release a client. And not only that, like the director rightfully put it, we are looking at ways and means of empowering her post leaving the facility. The family tells Citizen TV that their kin was ready for discharge in July last year, but still remains in hospital till today. A few kilometers away at the Kenyatta National Hospital is another case of a patient detained. <laughs> My wife, I'm Alicia Pona. Woman Zuya. I'm Zuya. One attack up is Susan was diagnosed with a brain tumor at the facility. She was admitted in June 2020, where she was operated on and put on medication. In September of the same year, she was discharged, but she has not left the facility. Ile pesa yenye alifanyo upasuaji, ilikuwa ni kiasi kikubwa ambacho hatungeweza ku kugaramia kama familia. Ilikuwa inafaa kwa 1.2, but kama familia tulieza kuchangisha kwa marafiki na tukapata kiwango cha 400,000. The bill has now grown in excess of 2.4 million shillings. What keeps her going through is her two daughters, who she hasn't met face to face since last year. Tutuangu mkubwa yiku na dada angu, ambaye ito Jacqueline Majuma. Alafu, shantili kona my mom. Shantili kona my mom. Sengeza ugara mea bibi angu. Vincent Odipo Onyango, Susan's spouse, has been living alone in this small house in Nairobi's Kiambiu slums. He was forced to ask his family to help him take care of the children. He says it hasn't been easy. The family says it had presented a land title deed as collateral but was rejected by the hospital. And as they search for other sources of funds, the bill continues to accumulate. We have 2.8. We have to go back to Marafiki and to go back to the family, but it has been a challenge for us. We sought a response from the Kenyatta National Hospital, but to no avail. Our emails dated June 23, 2021 and September 15, 2021, addressed to the Communications Director, Dave Opio, are yet to be responded despite acknowledgement of receipt of our questions. And whilst the detaining of patients is usually seen to be more prevalent in the private sector, it still happens in public hospitals. But usually it is easier to deal with public hospitals because of the subsidies that the government provides to all public hospitals, including the one you have mentioned. 
So in terms of public hospitals, there are clear avenues on how they deal with the members of the public who seek services and are unable to pay for one reason or the other. While the law provides for the right to a patient's dignity and the right for hospitals to conduct business, what happens when there is a conflict between the two? Hospitals justify this practice on the basis that once they release patients, it is impossible to follow up the unpaid bills. So there needs to be a balance between the profit making at the same time and offering the services. That balance needs to be there. But at the same time, there ought to be an outline system within the government that will make sure that the operations of both the private and the public are in line. But ideally, for every services, if you look at it clearly, most of the Kenyans are not able to afford many of the services that are offered in the private hospitals because many of the Kenyans are not able to, uh, to have the funds that are needed. So we need to bring more financing into the health care, public health care. I have been in the government for a long time because I believe that the government of health care is the government of the government. And every Kenyan is the one who is the one who is akona akona ile light ya, ku, ya kupata services za healthcare na kama kama serikali inaweza imarisha mipangilio yote ya ya mambo ya healthcare kama hizi tuna unakuta kila mtu tunakatwa tuna NHIF na na ni vizuri sana kama kama ingekuwa kiasi kwamba inawasaidia watu katika hali kama hizo mara nyingi kuna watu wetu there are avenues of trying to sort out the issues of unpaid bills rather than resorting to deten detaining patients. And when you are detained, it is uh, against your wish, and therefore it is a violation of the Constitution, which ensures that we have the freedom of movement, the liberty, and the dignity to be treated with a bit of respect. So that goes against the cardinal document of the country and therefore uh, what will encourage the health institutions to uh, pursue is to look at other avenues of ensuring that these contractual obligations are met by both parties. They should be innovative ways that don't punish the patient for getting better. I, you went to hospital to get better. Now you're better, you need to leave and be able to work in society. You need to be able to integrate back into society. By keeping you in the hospital, number one, we are uh, misusing the bed space that's available for another patient because you are, you, you are well and another patient could have used it. We are contributing to more harm to you because you, you've gotten better, but you're staying in a hospital where you can get hospital acquired infections, you can get mental disorders, you can get mental illness. So how are we helping you? The courts have on numerous occasions had cases pitting patients against the institutions where they are receiving treatment. Most judges and magistrates have in such instances ruled that the detention of the petitioner for their inability to pay their medical bills is unlawful, arbitrary and unconstitutional. In March 2021, there was a landmark ruling by the High Court where a Kenyan who had been detained in a health institution reached out to the High Court and the High Court passed a judgment that it was not proper for the institution to detain the said Kenyan but the institution should have looked at other avenues of ensuring that the contractual obligations are met. In fact, to use the words of the judge, it was monstrous and unconstitutional to detain a Kenya for not paying, for pay, failing to pay a hostel. But supporters of the private healthcare model state that you cannot fault private sector players for state inefficiencies. They instead blame government for not doing enough to reform the public health sector, equip public hospitals, and make universal healthcare a reality. Universal healthcare is the way to go, and we have started that journey towards universal healthcare. And remember, UHC, in short, is actually a journey. It's not an event. And UHC basically means that you have uh, people accessing essential healthcare services, quality essential healthcare services with financial risk protection. And therefore, basically, you want everybody, including the very indigent, the vulnerable and marginalized communities, to be able to access the same quality of healthcare services without suffering financial risk protection. Hospitals are now demanding significant deposits before admitting patients. And while this may be useful in mitigating the losses hospitals may incur in unpaid invoices for medical services, 
It raises the prospect of locking out the poor.